Okay, here we go. Um, you're going to see a couple of little tricks. The first one is this masking tape. So I'm putting the masking tape on just to hold on to the important lines I put in my initial drawing so I don't want to lose them when the paint hits it. So, and I just do the initial drawing in a charcoal pencil. So yeah, that's, that's gone on. Now I'm doing the sky. I sped this sky up really fast to keep this video moving along. Um, yeah, it's just a gradient from blue to, you know, like a pastel yellow. I made a mistake. You just wipe that off. That's what you can do with oil paint. If you make a mistake, you just wipe it off and, you know, correct that. Carry on. Okay, now I'm using a hog bristle brush. So that's just a normal hog bristle fan brush, number two it is. And I just put some paint on to create the clouds. In this case, I'm just going for some wispy sort of wind-blowing clouds across an early morning sky. I'm not actually trying to paint like a cloud shape there. I'm just putting a bit of paint on with that brush, quite thick. Then when you get rid of that masking tape, in this case we'll power on to some hills or some mountains in the distance. So that just that saved me having to like carefully paint around those hills or draw them in later on again, redraw them. They're there now, it's easy done. Okay, so now I'm going to feather those clouds out with what is a badger brush. So that's a brush made out of badger hair. It's a natural hair brush. And what I'm then doing is I'm softening the edges of those clouds, but mainly the bottom edge, that transition from the bottom down. I'm holding on to that top edge. So I'm just working that badger brush round and round the circles, but mainly from the bottom up each time. And this is how I do it. I do my initial, like I put something in, some cloud shapes down, like I just put that paint on and see what happens once I hit it with that badger brush. Then I come back again and refine those clouds like I'm doing now. Sorry that's like jumping in and out. Like I say, it's my first video, so it'll get better. So it's a nice way to get a quite a realistic sky quite fast with those couple of brushes. Now I'll start blocking in those mountain shapes in the background. I'll be working from light to dark as we move closer, i.e. the things that are further away are lighter, and as you move closer they, they get darker, and the colour becomes more saturated as it comes closer to you too. But at the moment we're just blocking in the darks and the lights. So you see I'm using a synthetic flat brush for this. This is just an everyday synthetic flat brush, nothing flash. And you'll see also that I use that badger brush like that to pull down on that top edge. And that just softens that top edge of those mountains and it sort of pushes them into the distance a little bit. The top edge becomes a little bit fuzzy. See that now? And there we go. As I come closer, I'm going a little bit darker. Now back to that fan brush. So we're doing basically doing a cloud inside the mountains, i.e. it's going to be mist, but it's used, put on the same way as what I put a cloud on. Only thing is now, I'll be using that badger brush, what you can't really tell is I'm not trying to hold on to that top edge, I'm just blending that whole thing out softly.
So you see like as I block this in, a lot of that atmosphere, that mist and that is done on this very first layer. Continuing to darken as we come closer with those mountains. And now with the fan brush again, I'm laying some more white paint in there. That's just titanium white, really almost pure. And then come back with that badger brush. Just pulling those mountains down a little bit there in the background, just softening that edge like before. And now blending that mist, that white paint, blending the white paint in to make it look like mist. That's what I'm doing. Bearing in mind this is like a 12 by 6 inch painting, so it's really small. And much like when I've done the cloud, I put some paint on, I blend it in, the paint moves, you see what happens, and then you refine it, you put a little bit more on, see what you get. I think there's something interesting coming up about now. Once I blend that piece of mist in there on your right, you're going to see that looks like kind of like a dinosaur's head. You've got to watch out for that dinosaur's head. So yeah, there we go. F fixing that up. Now blending that out. So I probably made a mistake up there when I've done that. I dragged some of that dark paint up into the sky, which I wasn't supposed to do. So I've just, you know, made another cloud. Oil painting so forgiving. So I take that bottom masking tape off. And then I'm just refining, refining those distant trees in this initial block in. And I'm just using an, it's actually an old synthetic flat brush. So it's like a one inch brush that's been used so much and when you just dab or yeah, you just dab that brush on the end and you can get those shapes that look a little bit like distant trees. Okay, now start doing that water reflection. This is a scene from in the South Island, New Zealand, near Doubtful Sound, and a sound called Bradshaw Sound. So, you know, I try and keep it like as representational as I can, but you know, the paint moves as you've seen, and you know, a little bit of artist license goes in. So you're just replicating the mirror reflection basically, what's above it, you're bringing down. you got quite a bit of license when you're doing a reflection. It's the reflection is like the poor cousin of the real thing. The most important thing is you get a horizon line straight and the reflections, whatever's reflecting has to be vert vertically below what's above it. But other than that, you know, you've got a bit of license. So block them in with those synthetic flats and then just blend that out with a badger brush. Back and forth, up and down. What you don't see on this video is the fact that I've got about three of these badger brushes and I'm washing them all the time. So I'm not just contaminating my lights with my darks. So every time I'm going into the dark, when I go back into the light, I have to wash my brush. Okay, one of the most important things that you have to do is you have to get your horizon line level. 
So that's what I'm doing there. I'm actually measuring it. And I'm using sneaky little bit of masking tape again. Just to put my distant like water line in. There, that's done. Just fix up with that masking tape. Made a little bit of, took a bit of paint off. It's a pretty sneaky trick. And I use a palette knife quite often to do my rocks like snow, water edges like you see here. And onto some snow. So this is wet and wet, wet on wet, like I keep on saying. So it would be much easier to put snow on with a palette knife if I had let this painting dry and I've come back in a subsequent wet over dry method. But right now I'm putting wet paint on top of wet paint. It's a little bit trickier, but you know, hey, it's good to do a video. And that paint's not white, it's like off-white. I really hold back on my bright brights. Now I'm just using, that's a hog bristle long filbert. It's like a number two brush. And just start putting in like some rock faces. And now I'm starting to put the distant trees, forest. In New Zealand we call this bush. Putting that in, and I'm putting that in with this, um, it's a hog bristled short filbert so it's like a stumpy little filbert oh that's better to zoom in i think i skipped a little bit out some of the boring stuff so when you're doing distant trees or trees in general the important thing is to only paint the highlights or you've got to leave those darks it's a real case of less is more when you're doing bush. So what I do is, I, as I initially, I just put some marks on the painting there on the canvas, and I work into my lightest lights. There's a lot of standing back, walking back, having a look, coming forward. Back on one of those long filberts, putting those distant, distant mountain shapes in. We have a lot of tussock grass up on our mountains, alpine tussock, and it shines up quite bright yellow and light like this, so, or bright orange I should, I should say.
I mix all my own greens, so my palette only consists of titanium white, cad yellow pale, cad yellow deep, I use a cadmium orange, and a red matter, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber. So it's seven tubes of paint, I think. So, and all my greens are mixed from the ultramarine blue, cad yellow pale, and usually the orange, sometimes the red, but, and of course white. But, you know, I could do another video on how to mix greens. If you have any questions, just fire me the questions. Now I'm just doing the reflection. Sorry for that glare. We had a bit of afternoon sun coming through the window. And we're on coronavirus lockdown here, by the way. So I hope wherever, wherever you are, things are going well. I hope you haven't got the virus. And if you have, I hope you're recovering. Um, but hence, that's why I made this first video, because I'm on lockdown. So like I said, the reflection's like the poor cousin of the real thing. Um, and there's quite a bit of license with it. I kind of like long reflections, pulling down long reflections on this type mirror type. It's not a lake, it's a fjord down south, so it's salt water. But it could, it looks a lot like a lake. Okay, so now I've done the mountains, I've put all those trees on there, I've done a reflection and I'm just coming through and I'm putting a shoreline in. So like I said, it's, it's um, salt water, it's tidal down here in the fjordlands of New Zealand. So, you know, every six hours, the look of the shoreline is going to change. So it gives you quite a bit of license, even if you're trying to be representational. So I just use a palette knife and drop a bit of paint on there and I'm getting this light really thick paint now of course I'm painting wet paint on top of wet paint and the only way to get wet paint on top of wet paint is with a light touch so you just gotta almost just drop that paint on there with a the palette knife you can't really if you press hard you're just gonna smear it in and it's going to um, combine with the wet paint below it and just create some sort of muddy mess. So you just got to drop it on softly, lightly. And I'm trying to work out, like, balance the painting a little bit. I won't lie to you, I actually came in and I finished this off this morning. Like, I painted everything up to what you see now, yesterday, and I, it was lacking a little bit of balance in the front. So... I came and put a little bit more shoreline to balance things out. And because it was dry enough, I could just, with, with a glaze, so a glaze, it's just white, titanium white, with quite a bit of liquin, well, mixed with quite a bit of liquin, so it's transparent, and then I'm not I'm not putting very much on the painting. Just a really light glaze is going on the painting there, and it's just interrupting that mirror reflection. So it's looking like a little bit of wind on the water. And you'll see I, you know, I took a little bit off too. So once the painting's dry, you can put it on, take it off, and there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, like I say, my first video, if you've got any questions, ask them. You know, I could do other things, particularly like mixing colours and maybe do a bigger painting. Um, this is very small, so hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching.